Tony Blair has reaffirmed he has no regrets about going to war in Iraq, but regrets the deaths of British troops deeply and profoundly. The former Prime Minister was recalled to fill in the gaps left by the evidence he first gave the Chilcot inquiry last year. James Hurst has been following today's events in London and joins us now from Westminster. James, did anything significantly change as a result of what Mr Blair said today? Well, Matt, I was here last time Mr Blair gave evidence and to me it sounded like pretty much all the arguments I heard this time I had heard last time. Even some of the same phrases were cropping up. The calculus of risk changed on September the 11th, 2001. But there was one important point that did seem to change. Mr Blair was far more frank about, almost frankly, the political gambles that he was taking in the lead up to the war. He pretty much admitted that he was making promises that he knew he might not be able to keep. The other thing that changed was the inquiry's approach today. They seemed almost more combative. They gave him perhaps a harder time because last time they were asking Tony Blair for his version of events. This time, armed with much more information and testimony, they were in a position to challenge his story. Almost exactly a year ago, Tony Blair went into the inquiry centre through a side door. The first change today was that he went in at the front with a look to the cameras, perhaps a portent of his more confident performance. Once again, there were protesters outside, but there were fewer than last time. Inside, the inquiry panel was waiting. With 12 months of new evidence under their belt, they had a lot of questions to ask. There are a number of areas where we need to clarify what happened. Last time, Mr Blair told the inquiry he had promised to stand shoulder to shoulder with America and had always been public about it. The committee questioned him about still secret records that they have since seen of the discussions between the leaders in the run-up to the war. But these questions gave little more light. What Mr Blair did reveal, though, was that he kept George Bush in the dark about the political and legal worries he had at home, which might have stopped Britain joining the invasion right up to the last minute. I was going to continue um, giving absolute and firm commitment um, until the point at which definitively I couldn't. If, if I had through that period in January or February gone out and said anything that indicated there was a breach in the British position, that there was a chink of light that had opened up, it would have been uh, a political catastrophe for us. Yeah. After new written evidence this week from the former Attorney General, Lord Goldsmith, Mr Blair effectively conceded he had kept Parliament in the dark about the legal concerns. But he said it was only ever draft opinion and that the final opinion had cleared the way for invasion. The committee, though, still seemed to have concerns that in early 2002, Mr Blair's closest team, the Cabinet, weren't clear that Britain was on a course which could lead to military action. Of course they were taking collective responsibility for the policy because it was being outlined the entire time and they knew that you can't simply decide but they didn't one know day the military that you're going to have... They didn't know the, the military preparations. I, I would have way. been astonished if they, did, if they didn't because there was discussion of that and I'm sure, again, I'll have to go back over the, the Although the within, within the MOD, people were told to keep it very tight. Well, the of course, and you, 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 look, if you're preparing military action, you've got to keep it very tight. Today, the inquiry focused on politics, not military matters of the Iraq war. The panel didn't ask for any clarification about equipment or resources for troops. So for families of the fallen who were in the inquiry room, the clarification that Mr Blair chose to offer at the end of his evidence may have been the most important of the day. Asked last time if he had any regrets, he said he took responsibility, but no regrets. That was taken as my meaning that... I had no regrets about the loss of life, and that was never my meaning or my intention. And I wanted to make that clear, that, of course, I, I regret deeply and profoundly the loss of life, whether from our own armed forces, those of other nations, the civilians who help people in Iraq, or the Iraqis themselves. And I just wanted to say that because I think it is right to say it, and it's what I feel. Thank you. Now, if I... Yep, be quiet, please. Please. Be quiet, please. Now, those families who you heard there shouting too late also heard throughout that testimony Mr Blair stick to his 
key position which it was the right thing to do, to invade, to depose Saddam Hussein. He said the nature of the regime wasn't in itself justification to invade, but it was the reason that we should be proud to have brought that regime to an end. James, what reaction has there been to Tony Blair's second appearance today? Well, I think a fairly angry reaction from some of those families. Rose Gentle, who was in the inquiry room, her son was killed in Iraq and she shouted at Mr Blair as he left, your lies killed my son. I also heard earlier Reg Keyes, whose son died in Iraq, saying that that was the first time he'd heard this expression of regret from Mr Blair. He was concerned that the former Prime Minister didn't acknowledge the presence of those families in the inquiry room more. One other interesting bit of reaction, the inquiry had been mired in a bit of a row this week about the disclosure of classified documents and whether that's hampering their work. Now, that, that disclosure is a decision taken by the civil service, but the Prime Minister David Cameron was asked about it today and he seemed to express some confidence that the inquiry is going to be able to be as open and honest as possible. I think what matters is that they are following the evidence, they're calling people, they're asking questions. You know, this is, I think people can see, a full, open, proper inquiry, just as we push for an opposition and now we can see it's taking place. So, Matt, I think this is the, the biggest of the appearances in this final set of evidence sessions to happen for the Iraq inquiry, but they will continue taking testimony from various people until the middle of February. Among those still to give a second set of evidence will be Jack Straw. Once that's all completed, I think they're pretty much at the stage of beginning to write their report, but we don't know how long that will take. I suspect it will be a matter of months before we get their final conclusions. OK, James, thank you very much indeed for us this evening.